Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's virtual plant clinic. My name is Bill Lester. I'm with University of Florida Extension Service here in Hernando County. And we have a bunch of people here with us today. Our regular co-host, Lily Browning, is here with us. Good morning, Lily. How are you? I'm great, Bill. How are you? I'm here. I'm good. Yes. And we have our master gardener, Bernie, back by popular demand. Good morning, Bernie. How are you doing? Good morning. And we have a special guest that we've been trying to get on for a while. <laughs> I think it's the part fear of being in a little <laughs> box here and just kind of working, making our schedules work out. But Alyssa is with Hernando County Mosquito Control, and she's here to answer any and all questions about mosquito problems, issues, concerns, malaria, mm. whatever it might be. <laughs> None of, I'm not even that kind of doctor, so I can't really give you much medical information. <laughs> well, Bill, she not- just she just had to wait for me to ask her. See, then she felt <laughs> and <laughs> I saw her at the Hurricane Expo. I'm like, join us. <laughs> so, it's because easy I, and fun, and it really is. And I knew the one I had missed, I watched a little bit of, and I know there was mosquito-type questions. So... Like it's a good time to come on right before mm-hmm. I keep telling everyone, I promise the rainy season is going to start any, mm-hmm. second, any second now it's going to start. And then, then your phone will really start ringing. <laughs> yeah. And our uh, um, national mosquito control awareness week is next week. So. Cool. Well, everybody becomes aware of mosquitoes. When it starts to rain a lot, they walk out in their backyard and mm-hmm. say, ah, mosquitoes. And then uh, I see on Facebook, how come they don't spray up and down my street? Oh, good know, question. People say, yeah. I hate it when they spray because they kill all the bees. They kill all this and that. Mm-hmm. Nobody, nobody likes spraying, so, I think. So the thing is, too, um, right now about 99% of our calls are for container breeders. Um, so people not emptying their, uh, bird baths and things like that, letting them breed and our truck spraying is not going to help with that because, um, our, the mosquitoes that we're spraying for at night, um, aren't going to be the mosquitoes that are going to be out during the day in your kid's playground and in your gutters and things like that. So. So we do have daytime and nighttime. Oh yeah, those in Hernando County. Yeah. How many species do you know? Do we have in our county? So we have forty plus. That's tw- about twelve are pests. So I don't know if anyone ever realized that. I I learned that from Karen, who had the job before you, mm-hmm. and that just blows me away because for most people they think a mosquito is a mosquito is a mm-hmm. mosquito is a mosquito and here just in our county we have 40 Mm -hmm. plus different species and 12 of whom are pests so Mm -hmm. you know and there's over 3500 in the world so and so how many of them are disease spreaders not nearly (laughs) as many (laughs) so how many in our county are um, disease spreaders so we would say a about the 12 are going to be the uh, problem, the problem pests. So whether it's just from being ankle biters or from um, West Nile um, spreaders and things like that. So we do have some of them here, but um, a majority of them are just, they're going to be ankle biters and things like that. So when you're going outside, they're more of a nuisance than Okay, so what, yeah, so the diseases that could possibly occur in Hernando County are what? So um, West Nile, um, Eastern Equine Encephalitis is one. Um, Those are two of the bigger ones. I know we had a question about malaria. We are, there was one in South Florida, but it is very rare in Hernando County. We're really doing good with Mm -hmm. not bringing that in and people are not bringing that here. So as of right now, it's very rare to find any 
malarial thing here. So the person in South Florida had the, who had malaria, had they been out of the country? So it, it from what we understand, no. Um, they were a homeless person uh, living near the airport. So it it wasn't necessarily them that could have been bringing it, but um, it could have been somebody coming off the airplane, got bit by a mosquito, um, could have bitten them. But from what we understand, they were a homeless person living. So that's, that's pretty fascinating. So mm -hmm. someone from another country who may have had malaria, mm -hmm. exited an airplane in South Florida, a, mis a South Florida mosquito bit that person and then flew over mm -hmm. to this homeless person and bit them and they got malaria. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. So it's, it's, real it's weird how they can work because yes, it could either uh, be transferred from person to um, mosquito to person or through birds, like our chickens, our sentinel chickens, um, through uh, horses and things like that, so. Yeah, I know some of the diseases that we do have issues here have much more of a complicated pattern, like you mentioned, birds. Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. West Nile that we're looking at when we have our sentinel chickens? We have yes. county workers who are real chickens, mm -hmm. and I mean that, <laughs> they are yep. real chickens, and so what happens with West Nile is a mosquito has to bite a bird, correct? Mm -hmm. And then infect it. And then another mosquito has to bite that bird, the uh, pathogen, and take it to a horse or possibly a human. Yeah. Okay. So what do our chickens do for us? So we have our chickens spread um, throughout the county in kind of areas with a possible um, high population of mosquitoes, mosquito breeding and things like that. So we uh, test their blood every week. We have one of our techs go out, he uh, gets blood from them. We send it to a lab and we test it for different things. And then it'll come back whether or not it is West Nile positive, so. Okay, and if the chicken is West Nile positive, it's not, it's not sick. No, um, so that's the good thing. We do separate it. Um, yeah. We take it out of the field because um, it's going to continue to test. Yes. Positive, right? yes. So mm -hmm. um, we do take it out of the field, but it's a good indication of what's going on in the mosquitoes in Hernando County. And so what you need to treat for and where. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So that chicken gets retired out of <laughs> out of its yep. job, yep. but it's still it's fine. Its eggs mm -hmm. are fine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, the triple E, eastern equine encephalitis, mm -hmm. is that purely a horse disease? So it's horses, I want to say, uh, can go to cattle, okay. um, donkeys, uh, anything, and members of the equine well, family. Livestock, yes. Yeah. And it has a very high uh, mortality rate. Mm -hmm. But you can, um, they do have vaccines against them. You can ask your um, vet for vaccines. Is it only the females that uh, go after blood? Yes. Yes. They need a blood meal to um, lay their eggs. So half, half the mosquitoes aren't bad right off the bat. Right. There you yeah, go. Well, and, and not all mosquitoes um, bite humans. There um, are some that will feed on other mosquito uh, larva, so they never actually have to get a blood meal from humans. So, yeah, it's a very it's, interesting. It's, it's a it's very only, interesting bug. Yeah. The females are the only biters. Take mm -hmm. that, do with that what you will, but mm -hmm. it's because they need the protein to lay the eggs, mm -hmm. and they get that from the blood. And mm -hmm. Bernie's right. So that, that you've got half of them that already aren't a problem. They're they're mm -hmm. male, and what would you say, you know, is nature's purpose for mosquitoes? Oh, I think they, she, go ahead. they're pollinators. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they I mean, they're obviously nuisance, but <laughs> they are also um, pollinators. So and they're a food source. Yes. Yeah. Food source for a lot of other aquatic mm -hmm. insects, dragonfly larva, adult mm -hmm. dragonflies, bats, mm -hmm. many other animals eat mm -hmm. strange because people rarely eat insects but insects are a very very important food source 
for everything else mm -hmm. in the animal kingdom, except for us, it looks, seems like. Oh, yeah. we eat more than we know of, but that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Eat, we, <laughs> we eat a whole lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> yes. So that is, that's pretty cool. Um, and you were talking about, you know, people call you, come spray, come spray, come spray. Mm -hmm. And as you said, this, by law, you are not allowed to just send a spray truck out mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it, we have to check out what's going on in the area, um, what's breeding, if it's container breeders, if they're um, from the woods nearby, if they're uh, floodwater mosquitoes. So our techs go out and they're very observant in what's going on in the county, what kind of mosquitoes are where, what is being bred. Because one of the biggest problems is um, they can breed in a cap full of water. So it takes this tiny amount of water um, to have them breeding in your yard. So people might have uh, kids toys, their gutters, uh, bird baths that they don't even think about. It's just, it goes right past them when they walk by it. And that could be their biggest issue in their yard. So we can come out and we can spray and we can spray and we can spray. But ultimately, if you have that water sitting there and it's breeding, it's not mm -hmm. going to help you indefinitely. We're it's going to keep coming back. And as you said, you can only spray at night. You're not allowed out during the day. Mm -hmm. and, um, what you spray is a contact killer, meaning that droplet that gets sprayed from that truck mm -hmm. has to contact a mosquito in the air to kill it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You it's know, so very it's, difficult to do. Yes. 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 And we do have the backpack sprayers and we have um, granules we can put in like bromeliads and things like that. Yes. But yes, the truck sprayer is is not going to help with these container breeders. So well, your your guys go out and they do a whole bunch of mitigation mm -hmm. things like mowing is one, yep. you know, around some of our waterways. Mm -hmm. Um well, my favorite is when they do a count of how many mosquitoes are in an area. Those guys are underpaid. This is how they do a count. Yep. I'm going to stand here for 10 minutes and count mm -hmm. how many, many mosquitoes are on me. Yep. And they <laughs> test every week. We have a guy that um, goes through every single trap. We have about 18 traps in the county um, that we set up around different areas. And he counts every single mosquito we catch in those traps. And later on in the year, it's going to be in the thousands. And he yes. counts them and he identifies what species they are. Yes, that's so. the thing. They bring them back and say, okay, let's separate. Let's see what species we mm -hmm. have. And that's important because some of those species are disease spreaders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know that I was supposed to ride along with them a couple of years ago and also spend a day with your um, uh, mosquito ID person. Because mm -hmm. I am, not, you know, I can idea mosquito but when it comes between different species i'm i've never had to do mm -hmm. it before i, I think i mm -hmm. have id keys where i could find them but i figured mm -hmm. i could learn a lot from spending a day with somebody like that i need to mm -hmm. get a hold of sandra and work that out never had yeah, and, in the past and jared is very good at um identifying them he will overload you with knowledge about <laughs> all the different like mosquitoes <laughs> we like that here <laughs> Bernie's thinking, oh, I want to come, I want to come. Yeah. <laughs> what, what percentage uh, are the bad guys? That, um, the uh, Pasco people, I've, I've talked to them a couple of times to do your same job. Uh, they, they do a lot of aerial spraying. And uh, mm -hmm. they're always talking about the Aedes aegypti. Mm -hmm. It's their big one that they're going after. Mm -hmm. And I assume we have the same insect. And it's that's yeah. one of the really bad ones. What, mm -hmm. What's the percentage of, of the mosquitoes that are the really bad ones? That's a good question. Um, I know our, our main one that we are collecting is um, like 80s albopictus right now. It's 80s albopictus from all the containers. So right now that's our biggest one. It changes throughout the season um, depending how much rain we have um, and things like that. So I guess it all depends. Depends on the, yeah. yeah it depends on the area. It depends, yeah. We have a lot of mosquitoes that aren't 
a huge issue with vectoring diseases. I know the one small that prefers living in bromeliad. They'll bite no, the heck out of you, population of Egypt, and they'll, they'll make the, the whole rainstorm, neighborhood very, very unhappy, but they're yeah. not one of the major ones for vectoring diseases. That's me. And this old Sounds like Sandra is... Uh, um, um, well, we need to get Sandra yeah. on here. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually... She's discussing right now um, yeah. with I can have 10 people on here, so we still got room. <laughs> she, um, she was uh, just saying that um, we have a small population of um, Egypti, but when uh, the, we get further into the season and it starts raining more, we focus, um, our shift focuses more towards the flood water mosquitoes. So. Mm -hmm. So what's going to happen, Alyssa, if I have a whole lot of mosquitoes in my yard and I call you, what will happen so, after that? Are, am I going to get in trouble? No, no. Okay. <laughs> is it going to um, cost me anything? No. So that's one okay. of our big uh, things is um, through your taxes, you do pay for it. So you give us a call. Um, we will, uh, you can either give us a call or you can put in a service request online, which we have both on our Facebook and our website, which is through the county. Um, we will have one of our texts go out. Our text will um, check out the area, see what's going on, see if they can find breeding, what the landing count is. So when they're sitting there mm -hmm. seeing how many land on them. Um, they're going around and inspecting anything they can to see where mosquitoes could possibly be coming from. We do get a lot of calls about noceums um, yeah. and people thinking that they're mosquitoes. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about that, but with the mosquitoes, they'll come out, check out what's going on, and um, they will determine the best course of action for what is on that property and what is on the surrounding neighbors areas. Because sometimes, it's not just you that's having a problem. It can be also your neighbors. Um, and sometimes your neighbors can be the problem with containers and things mm -hmm. like that. So you're like, I've checked my yard. I have nothing. I have no standing water. But my neighbor <laughs> has yeah. a boat that's, you know, sitting there and it's filled with water and things like that. So we will send our texts out and they go see what's going on in so the will community. the neighbor get in trouble? No, we no, no one's getting in trouble. So. Nobody gets in trouble. Um, we just try to remind people: always dump and drain your standing water. That's our biggest thing: is dump and drain standing water. Um, protect yourself with clothes that are going to cover you. Um, avoid dusk and dawn because that's <laughs> which is know, when we that, tell you to go out because yeah. it's so hot and the others. <laughs> yeah, and it's that's usually when they're active. But if you're covering yourself and using the right precautions, that's good. But yeah, nobody's going to get in trouble from anything unless um, in the case of unkempt pools, because unkempt pools can become a public health issue mm -hmm. if they're breeding and um, nobody is taking care of it. Because there, there's pretty easy things to do for that. We have mosquito fish that we can put in pools that aren't running and things like that free of charge. Um, so, so yeah, explain that mosquito fish program. So we have um, what they're called gambusia. Um, and we bring them out. They're a uh, small, like guppy type fish. Um, they do not get that big. And we can put them in um, ponds. We can put them in lakes, um, bodies of water that aren't going to have a lot of filtration. So pools that aren't running in foreclosed houses, or if let's say your pump broke, um, you can give us a call. We'll bring them out. We put them in your pool. Um, and it's, to keep the larva down, the eggs, larva, and things like that down. And how much does that cost? They're free. See, yeah. we keep liking her answer. Also free through the county. Right. Yeah. They don't charge you. They don't arrest you. You don't get in trouble when you call. Them. <laughs> great. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to point out to everybody watching this, whether you're on here live or watching the recording, that no matter where you live in Florida, your county has a mosquito control department. Isn't that correct? Isn't every county oh, yeah. required to have one by law? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you live in a county other than Hernando County, you have a mosquito control department. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure if you call them, they can give you advice, help you out. If you have a mosquito mm -hmm. problem and you live in Miami, you live in the Panhandle, wherever you live, they're going to be able to help you out. And of course, if you're here in Hernando County, we're going to have to show your contact information at the end. Yes. Yes. Our number is uh, 352-540-6552, which we can leave it in the comments. Um, 
but you can either call us or you can go on our website to uh, create a service request for fish or for uh, us coming out and checking out what's going on. I bet you if Teresa's still watching us live, she can pull pull up your website and share the link in the comments. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, she's, she's if I was going to have a party outside tonight, and I know I've got a lot of mosquitoes, does burning the, the citronella candles work? And, and if it doesn't, is there something else that would be even more effective that I could do to uh, keep my guests from being eaten alive? So uh, we take everything with a grain of uh, sand with citronella. It, it, it can work. It can't. It all depends. Um, we do have a list of different uh, plants that can help. Um, there's lemongrass, lavender can sometimes help, um, citronella, actual plants, things like that can help mint. Um, but our number one thing is going to be to defend yourself with DEET, um, D-E-E-T. So any spray, lotion, towelette or anything that has DEET is going to help you also uh, picaridin, um, IR3535, and oil of lemon eucalyptus. Those are the things to protect yourself, other than dumping and draining, to protect yourself. Sorry. So when so I get there, get there, I just spray them with the meat <laughs> and they're set. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I know it's hot and it's hard to, but if they're covered up more with um, longer sleep, you know, breathable fabric, but, or jeans that also really helps not get bit if you're covering up. Are there people who are, mosquitoes are more attracted to than others? There's, there's tests everywhere um, going out about that to see who they're more attracted to, what they're more attracted to, but it's mostly the carbon dioxide you're expelling. So, I mean, it's so breathing people that's who they're yeah, 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 breathing. Yeah, the you are a mosquito theory. magnet. Yes. yes. So that, yeah, there's tests everywhere to see if they like men or women more, if they like, you know, um, younger, older, anything like that. There's always tests going around. So, okay. Yeah, Cause they don't actually <laughs> bother me too terribly, but I know, you know, like my husband, <clears throat> eaten all over and he's the native mm -hmm. Floridian. <laughs> and it's funny because yeah, um my my daughter gets bit way more than I do and it's don't know why we're in the same area doing the same right, thing. Right, so yeah. and it could just be how your body reacts too. I might get mm -hmm. bit just as much, but my body doesn't, you know, produce histamine, you know, or something mm -hmm. from the yeah, body. Yeah, you're not so, gonna yeah, Sweet when you get bit, um, the like welch you're getting is your body's reaction to it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will say they're allergic to mosquitoes and things like that, but it's just that's how your body is reacting. Nobody's body is going to react the same way as anyone else's. So, yeah. Pretty cool. So we got a question here yeah. about how effective growing lemongrass, geraniums, lavender, et cetera, to keep the mosquitoes away. I can tell you, Lavender does not grow well in Central Florida. It is mm -hmm. too hot down here. So mm -hmm. we could probably scratch lavender off that list. And geraniums are only going to do well really in spring and fall. They don't like our summers that much. I have lemongrass in my yard. I have several great big plums. Mm -hmm. And it is really good in Asian cuisine. Mm -hmm. And I know that if you grow mint, mint's very, very important if you want to make mojitos. So, Bernie, for your party, if you're making mosquitoes, <laughs> you need mint. But as far as protecting from mosquitoes, I wouldn't think that it's probably your most effective plan. It's not. And and um, they become less effective over time. They can um, basically get used to the plant. So mm -hmm. it can help in like a, a short period of time, if at all. Um, but like we said, we always want to continuously tell you, Using DEET is going to be your number one. So savior. treating your body is yes. the most effective it's thing. It's protecting do. yourself, protecting obviously your children, your uh, mm -hmm. pets and things like that. That is going to be your biggest thing is going to be protecting yourself, covering your, you know, yourself, uh, dressing appropriately and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So all those plants, well, except with the exception of lavender, which doesn't do well here, are all 
great to have in your yard for other reasons, mm -hmm. but when it comes to um, mosquito prevention and control, eh, not What about some of the essential oils that might have lavender and stuff in it to put on your body? Mm -hmm probably won't hurt, but the Badijas have proven the most effective in keeping mm -hmm. them away. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the uh, oil of lemon eucalyptus can help, which is um, like an essential oil mm -hmm. that can help. I think the last I read, I mean, they've done research on all those different materials. If you, you know, actually put them on you mm -hmm. and DEET and Picaridin last for a reasonably long time, depending on what brand or strength or whatever you use mm -hmm. some of the other ones they found they work but you have to reapply them every five minutes <laughs> so and that actually if you look on the um the item that you're using that has deet or picaridin or ir 3535 it's going to give you a percentage and um a lot of people will think that percentage is how strong it is so you say okay I got a 10% versus a 15%. The 15% is going to be stronger. It's actually the amount of time it works. So it's not necessarily the, the strength of it. It's how long it is going to be active and working for you. Okay. There's some, oh, Teresa has a great, okay. We'll get to Teresa's, I, I guess. I, I had to go through this one first. I don't know what does it do. Drugs away. Does the app help? What does it do? Does it make a noise? It's I'm not sure. sure. I I have not heard of that. I have not heard of an app that keeps bugs away. If it works, give us a call. Um, we might be out of a job, but <laughs> we're pretty much at the point where there's an app for just about everything. Yeah, something that I didn't know there was one for. There there might be an app to like distinguish what your bugs are, but to keep them away, I am not sure. Maybe it just have not heard of that. Go away, go away, go away. Maybe. Okay, a number of years ago when uh, Zika first became a problem, we made a series of videos, and I guess it's that time of year for us to drag them out again. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, let you know when you guys can share them on your Facebook pages because they're still classic videos. They are fantastic. I think one of them, uh, the point is about... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can get phone apps that play a certain song or a frequency or a noise that if you carry it around with you, playing on that is supposed to keep mosquitoes and insects away. I don't believe that that's been shown to be very effective. I, I can't speak on that. I mean, I have not heard of that. Um, it sounds like a cool idea. I so, probably I can't I speak on that. that. Yeah. What about bug zappers? Um, it, it's, I mean, you have to hit them uh, mm -hmm. to kill them. So, I mean, it's, if you're, if you're swinging it around, it can help. Um, and it's, but it's, they're attracted to your carbon dioxide. So when we put our traps out, we put dry ice out, um, mm -hmm. because that's, it, it can attract them. It mimics, um, the carbon dioxide you expel. So it's, it can help if they run into it, but the it's problem not is, a, so every, every bug, every bug runs into it. It doesn't distinguish, yeah. oh, you're not a mosquito. I'm not going to kill it, you. Yeah. And it's, it's not necessarily going to attract them because it's not expelling what they want. Okay. Yeah. And those zappers are going to kill a lot of moths. Mm -hmm. I would a guess lot of good bugs. a lot of beneficial <laughs> insects. And they're just gross. Really which I have to, around at night. They're mm -hmm. just gross. They get just full of dead bugs and, you know, for what, you know, you, you just killed a lot of beneficials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may think that you're doing good, but not really. Mm -hmm. So is there a, Alyssa, is there a procedure to get on the no spray zone for beekeepers? If you're a beekeeper. Um, yeah. So you can give us a call. Um, we check with, uh, we check the register beekeeper list every year. Um, I actually just did that last month. I called, every registered beekeeper in Hernando County. Um, we ask them if they want to be on the no spray zone list. Um, and we go from there so they can give us a call. Um, we do want to reiterate, we call the list that is uh, put out by the state. So um, by the Florida Beekeepers Association. Um, but yes, they can give us a call. However, our big ex, you know, disclaimer there, 
if we have a um, hurricane or a natural disaster or anything like that, um, all bets are off the table. If we have to spray, we have to spray because that turns into a public health hazard and we have to keep our number one goal is public safety. So right. even if you are on the no spray zone list, we will try to honor that um, when we're sending our trucks out. But in the case of hurricanes or natural disasters, we have to keep the community in our thoughts foremost before anything else. So we might have to spray near or around your home. But again, it's a contact killer and there's not many bees out at night. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And once it hit if, if you cover if you know that they're spraying and you cover your hives and protect everything, mm -hmm. it should be much, much less of a problem. And we do put out um our uh where we're spraying on our Facebook. We put out a map of where we're spraying. So if you keep an eye on our Facebook, we will let people know where we're gonna be. So and like you said, we only we only spray at night. Um, we don't start until after I want to say it's eight p.m. So we start late enough into the night that usually they're in the hive. They're you know hunkering down for the night. So during the summer, when the trucks go out, do kids still ride their bikes around behind the trucks? Because no, because it's she said it's eight p.m. <laughs> it's yeah, they should not be. That never um, stop. And, well, and our trucks, our trucks do not spray if they are driving and they see somebody walking on the side of the road they're not going to continue to spray this they person and do. yeah <laughs> they're, they're not going to douse them i mean i was not one of one one of the ones who purposefully chased yeah. the spray to be in it i would run away from it and i swear the guy would follow me <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah no our guy is not actively going out looking <laughs> to spray people yeah. And the, those were probably the days that melathion was being used. But no longer, probably, yeah. Yeah, no longer is. So, yeah, I'd be running through Masark Town in my bare feet trying to get away from it. <laughs> and they would come out, like, starting at, like, 4 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And they would come out as a routine then. Mm -hmm. They do not do that any longer. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> How'd you keep the chicken safe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we all ate those that chicken too. So, <laughs> you know, since it's only the girl mosquitoes, stay close to the ugliest guy there, and maybe that'll kind of be a repellent for you. There you go. <laughs> yeah, Lee down in Broward County tried the bracelets, and she said they only work for about five minutes. I know that they're not mm -hmm. very effective. Yeah, they're they're not really something we suggest. Those, those yeah. ultrasound things uh, are, I, I, I hate to say they're a fraud, but they, they don't seem to work on anything else. And yet they sell them for every possible animal thing that there could be. Mm -hmm. there, there's an ultrasonic yeah. mole killer, mm -hmm. ultrasonic deer chaser, ultrasonic bird chaser, mm -hmm. ultrasonic everything. And yet the, all those animals stand around and look at these ultrasonic mm -hmm. things and eat them or whatever and then doesn't seem to bother them at all so maybe that's what that app is maybe it's putting i think that's what the app is an ultrasound yeah. Yeah, yeah they make that for uh deterring roaches in your house and a whole host of different mm -hmm. things some people don't, don't endorse them. that <laughs> no. no the only thing um, that really gets confused with the ultrasound is fat so yeah and, and they're eating yeah. the end they're eating the mosquitoes so right yes don't so. use the app right. well surprisingly um uh mosquitoes actually only make up one percent of a bat's diet right so, so a you lot can't of, rely on them but yes so yeah. we do i mean dragonfly nymphs and things like that eat them at a higher uh frequency but yeah um bats actually yeah only one percent of their diet is made up by mosquitoes but that's because if you're looking at something and something is this big and they're looking at a dragonfly and it's this big you're going to go for the bigger meal rather yeah. than the smaller thing so makes sense yeah. yeah dragonfly nymphs are amazing at eating uh mosquito nymphs i they are they're ago, terrifying too and I, I i started leaving some leaves and dirt in the bottom of the pond and i would always have uh dragonfly larvae in it 
and you could sit there in the middle of the day and I'd always have some mosquito larva in it, mm -hmm. but I had fish and you see a dragonfly larva come swimming up from the bottom, chomp, 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 eat a half a dozen, you go down. Another one will come up, eat a half a dozen and go down. They gobble them right up. So I've, Oh yeah, I and never... if you, you can Google um, videos and watch them up close and it's a scary sight. Like they are, they are the terminators of eating mosquito. They are just their wild mouth to parts watch. are unique and amazing. They're yeah. huge. They come sticking out. Mm -hmm. They like trap jaw mm -hmm. to grab them. So you mentioned at one point putting out granules. So what granules is it that you're speaking of, and is it available for a homeowner? Yes. Um, so um, if you treat with BTI, um, it's a biological larvicide. It's available at Lowe's. It's available at Home Depot, Walmart. Um, so just look for um, when you're looking in the bug section mm -hmm. or the bug controlling section, um, look for something with BTI. Um, and that can help you. You can pour it in your bromeliads um, and things like that to try and do it yourself. So. They also call them mosquito dunks. They, they yes, they have the mosquito dunks. They're yep. not looking cakes that you can yeah. break up. And like you said, sprinkle. Well, you brought up bromeliads. So, you mm -hmm. know, for those who love the bromeliads, it is a native plant. Mm -hmm. But boy, does it hold water and attract mm -hmm. mosquitoes. And I think the way they would grow in nature, you know, here, there, whatever, it didn't become too terrible of a problem. It's when we plant them in mass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, of course, then you, oh, look, you know, playground for the mosquito. Mm -hmm. And so, we're not saying don't have them, don't throw them away, get rid of them, rip them up. If you don't want to, that's for you. But after it rains, just make sure you're either spraying it out using uh, the dunks or the granules or wipe it out. Yeah. Because if you're wiping it out and getting any residual eggs or larva that could be in there, that can also help dramatically reduce. Right. And your... if you have like a bed of them, get your hose out, get it on high. Mm -hmm. Once a week, really shoot that water out mm -hmm. of it you know, and crumble up that BT. Mm -hmm. um, bird baths, you know, that's a Florida friendly mm -hmm. element is a bird bath. And I mm -hmm. tell everyone, you know, you know you. If you're not going to dump that bird bath once a week, then don't have a bird bath. Mm -hmm. And not just dumping it, have a brush nearby, scrub mm -hmm. it, especially up around the edges, because that's where those eggs can stick too. Mm -hmm. And they they can dry eggs can just wait for like years, can't they? <laughs> until they Um for some species, yeah, they can they can wait till they get wet again to mm -hmm. hatch. Sometimes they lay them in moist soil that they know is going to get moist again or wet um and they will hatch so yeah they're very resilient so yes and the other uh, oh rain barrels mm -hmm. so what do you have any issues you know, any calls out that have you know been traced back to a properly functioning rain barrel with a lid on it and everything so um most of the time people will buy uh, screens to put mm -hmm. so that they can't get in there. Sometimes if they do, what have you, um, you can always call us. We can give you mosquito fish for those, for troughs and rain barrels. So um, we can help with that as well so that it still can function and we can put mosquito fish in there. Okay. Sometimes yeah, I know we've been contacted by people in the past with um, the large water troughs for yeah. farm animals for cattle right, right. Yeah. yeah when the horse goes to drink from it the fish just go lower like they would yes in a yeah. or something yeah mm -hmm. yeah they're yeah. very yeah. reactive to shadows so when they see a shadow they're kind of gonna yes and i tell you know in my rain barrel workshops we do discuss you know what about mosquitoes mm -hmm. and i tell them well there are mosquitoes in your gutters you know they're there and you guys seem to like my current rain barrels that are not, the gutter is not connected into the barrel. Mm -hmm. I guess it just, you know, doesn't let, you know, trap them in there where they can breathe mm -hmm. more. And um, it does come with a lid and that you screw on and a screen. And mm -hmm. so I'd also tell them to 
once a week with a gloved hand, walk by and push the leaves away. You're going to gather a lot of leaves mm -hmm. on that. Thing. You're going to gather more roof gravel than you ever imagined. <laughs> but um, get that away because, again, as you mentioned, the mosquitoes can breed in the smallest mm -hmm. bit of water. So just brush it away when you're mm -hmm. out there dumping your um, or refilling your bird bath with clean water and uh, shooting out your bromeliads <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. all, all at the same time. And then walk around and make sure you don't have anything holding water. Trees with holes are is something people overlook. Mm -hmm. And yep, there there is a specific breed of mosquito that only lays its eggs in tree holes. So what would you do, Dr. Lester, if you had a tree with a hole that mosquitoes were getting into? What is the best mitigating um, procedure for that? Because uh, people talk about filling it with cement. I don't think that's a great idea for the tree. Well, first of all, if you had a tree that had a hole in it that was big enough where mosquitoes are breeding, it's probably either a dead tree or a tree that will become dead in the not too distant future. So that's a pretty serious problem for a tree. So if it's something in your yard where it's going to, you know, be a safety or health hazard, you're going to have to call an arborist and probably get the tree taken down. I think most of the ones that breed out in the woods or out there in the snags, the dead trees, they're great for wildlife. So they're great for birds, for woodpeckers, they're great for beetles, apparently good for mosquitoes too. We don't really want to be encouraging them. Well, that could be why the woodpeckers are there. <laughs> Again, back to the food source. And really just trying to promote some kind of decent natural balance in your yard and in your neighborhood realizing that you know we can't sanitize the great outdoors people call us and are well why can't i get rid of all the mosquitoes and all the lizards because they poop on my house and i don't like snakes i want to get rid of all that and i want to get rid of the birds i don't want but i want the birds that i do want and i want to kill all the caterpillars on all my plants except for the monarchs on the milkweed and it's like you can't sanitize the great outdoors and you can't pick and choose like that because it's all an ecosystem it all works together Speaking of which, we see advertised from pest control companies that they will do mosquito control, you know, for your I yard. I've always wondered, company. what is that? What is it that they're doing? Do you have any idea? I don't, and I don't want to speak on them personally. Um, they, pest control companies, they can, um, a lot of people will use them as an all around solution, um, which is fine. That's fine. If you want to have them to your house, um, we are, once again, we're in it for the public, public safety health. of everything. So That's yes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, Florida friendly landscaping does not recommend broadcast spraying of mm -hmm. anything because you're killing the entire ecosystem mm -hmm. in doing that. So mm -hmm. we want to promote a more natural way of handling things. Mm -hmm. Um, I think prevention a... is going to be a lot more effective in the long run than waiting until you have a ton of mosquitoes they've all hatched than trying to kill all of them at that point. Mm -hmm. I would think the answer to Basem's question here, using the water from the barrel on a daily basis will help keep, yes, because you're moving that water, it's not sitting stagnant. The best, uh, you know, the best thing to keep away mosquitoes is moving water like a fountain or something like that but you are yeah you're not letting it just sit there unused for mm -hmm. great periods of time so certainly it has to help yes do the uh, populations tend to be cyclic or are they purely a function of, of each year's weather <laughs> good question <It's> <laughs> We, depending on the weather is, um, it, it depends. That is a good question. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more of what we see is usually dependent on the weather. So in, in here in, in the marshes and things like that, it is different, but in your yards and things like that, it's going to be dependent on the weather more so mm -hmm. than anything. So, and, and floodwaters and things like that, when we get, heavy rains from a hurricane, you're going to see a lot more activity and things like that. So it's usually pretty dependent 
on the weather. Now in Florida, we do have mosquitoes year round. So, I mean, it's, we don't have heavy rains year round. So this is going to be our busier season, but we do have them year round. So yeah, it's, it's just going to be a forever ongoing thing mm -hmm. that we're finding the best solutions for. Um, one of the things you can do for um, the uh, tree holes is you can put pebbles in them. Or tree pebbles holes. or sand possibly. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least as a sense. you could do that. Mm -hmm. Filling filling holes in trees with concrete is not a good idea. That's something that people do up north. Yeah. In a tree that might be in your front yard. Mm -hmm. If you do things like that here, if the tree's not already dead, it will probably kill your tree and now it becomes dangerous if you don't get it taken down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Lee has a non mosquito question for you. <laughs> Yes, Lee down in Broward County asked, did I hear about any problems with avocados this year? My two trees and my entire neighborhood has no fruit this year. I have not, and I'm no, I'm not, I'm in Hernando County. So we're kind of at the very edge of tropical fruit world. Uh, and I'm no expert on what's happening in South Florida. I know that you guys had a bumper crop of mangoes down there this year. All I see on Facebook is everybody's tree covered with mangoes. We were just down to, where is it, um, a town near St. Pete just a few weeks ago and saw mango trees in people's yards that were covered with mangoes. I did not notice any avocados. I don't know of any problem like weather or environmental problem with this year. Keep in mind, avocados have a long-term problem. The, um, be the invasive beetle that is attacking avocados and spreading a fungus with avocados the ambrosia beetle is spread throughout all of florida so it's from north florida all the way down to south florida and it's a huge problem for commercial avocado growers in south florida home growers here in hernando county you know a couple years ago we lost most of our avocado trees here in the county so Lee, I didn't hear anything about specifically about avocados, but I'm always jealous every time I see the pictures of the mangoes from down there. So I've seen all kind of memes of neighbors lusting after their neighbors' mangoes, <laughs> watching like when are those mangoes going to be ready? <laughs> Apparently, mangoes are a big thing right now. Well, one of our kids lived in Miami, and the last time we were down there, we parked at his house, and um, I had to walk the dog around the neighborhood because he had to go poo, and. Um, the house you right it across, out, not me. Yeah, I had to squeeze that in somehow. Uh, the mm -hmm. house right across the street from him had a huge lychee tree in the front yard. Covered with lychees, and they weren't picking them. I mean, it was just a, a fruit tree, and they were falling off, mm -hmm. which is going to cause problems with rats and other things eating yeah, them. Yeah, yes. But, I mean, down there, everybody has a mango tree or two or ten in their yard. You have a lychee, you have an avocado. You have, you know, jackfruit, you have, oh, there's just so many different things that you could pick from. And they grow so fast. People, mm -hmm. Bernie, you know that if you grow a lemon tree from seed, how long does it take <clears throat> to get lemons around here? Mm, if you're really lucky, about seven years uh, before it has any reasonable production, it can take as, as long as 11 years from seed. So in Miami and Homestead, it takes one to two years from seed, <laughs> from seed. Yeah. Oh. Stuff grows like it grows like a weed year round, never slows down, down that far south. So, so things are different down there, but then again, they have their share of mosquitoes too. Is anybody else feeling itchy? <laughs> to this conversation. Yeah, no, the mosquito conversation did make me a little itchy. Yeah. Is, is there any predator of, of mosquitoes of, of any real note? There, there. It depends on the stage. So, um, like we talked about the uh, dragonfly nymphs and things like that, they don't make up a significant diet necessarily of really anything Anyone. yeah so uh, but like our gambusia we put them in areas where we hope they're going to be um 
very, very full for so these a, gambusia, quite a while. Are these gambusia, are they native fish? They are, yes. Okay, so they're not in, they're not going to be our next invasive species. No. <laughs> and you can you can go into any of the um, bodies of water, like the lakes or anything, and you can usually find them. Just okay. you just scoop them up. But um, yeah, yeah, like they a, look like minnows. Yes, they're mm -hmm. they they look like minnows. Um, and you breed you, them. You breed them, right? Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. we have a whole thing in the back of our um, office area, and we have our chickens, and we have uh, gambusia back there. So we have a whole little setup. Okay. But yes, nothing is nothing feeds on them significantly enough to dramatically reduce the population. So, well, the yeah, I know some people think that well, if I put in a bat house and I have bats in my yard, I'll have no mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. You'll still have mosquitoes. You'll probably you'll have fewer, but you'll still have mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Same thing with dragonflies. I think the key is just trying to create a good amount of diversity because there's a lot of things that eat mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. Nobody eats all the mosquitoes, though. Yeah, and yeah. there's two reasons why anybody, except the most hardy settlers in the beginning, <laughs> why anyone lives in Florida, why why we have such a population of people in Florida two reasons mosquito control and air conditioning those are the, the reasons why we are as populated as we are and that's really the flat out truth otherwise you know it's it's a harsh environment mm -hmm. to live in mm -hmm. so. well you know if you go to any really old city in florida saint augustine is the oldest city so that's a good example and if you ever visit the graveyard, you start reading the, the signs. Yellow fever, practice. yellow fever all yellow over. Yellow fever yeah. outbreaks. Mm -hmm. And yes. who, who here has had yellow fever before? I haven't. So That's because we're doing our job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, the Florida Mosquito Control Association, which is a thing, um, mm -hmm. actually just celebrated their uh, 100 years. So mosquito control has been around for quite a while. Is your phone number 6552? Is that what you said? Yes, 352-540-6552. Oh. We're fighting again. I know. <laughs> then when I fight about what gets up on the <laughs> on the screen there. And there is Alyssa's email address also. So mm -hmm. Is that correct? And, no, dot Hernando, dot FL, yes, dot, that dot, works. Dot, dot, yeah. Dot. yeah. And if, yeah. if we really long emails, we do. And <laughs> if um, we're not open and you can't get a hold of us through phone, you could leave a message or you can go to, like I said, our website or our Facebook. There's a link um, and you can go create a service request online. So if we're not here on the, on the weekends or you know, late nights and you're getting bit up while you're sitting outside, you can do that too. So just, Bernie's I, partway through his party and he's unhappy with the level of mosquito activity in his yard, he can call you. Mm -hmm. I am just amazed at the number of truly great services the counties offer that nobody takes advantage of. I mean, it, it's <clears throat> the, the mosquito thing is a wonderful thing and yet nobody really avails themselves of it a, a handful a minority small number in the mm -hmm. in the county and and it's the same way with with so many of the the great things the county's willing to do uh mm -hmm. you know it, it, it's a shame but the, the people coming here don't understand what's available to them they, they come from areas where generally uh either everything was done for them and they couldn't call anybody and get anything mm -hmm. done or they come from an area where nothing was done and, and they don't expect any services. So mm -hmm. uh, we, it, we need better education of the newcomers in the county. The, the people that are here, it's very difficult to get to them. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that it's another great service that the county mm -hmm. does for us. And we are a very small department so um we're we're juggling a lot of stuff um mm -hmm. so we try our best to get out within 24 hours of a service request unless it's over the uh over the weekend um but we try very hard to be out there as quickly as we can to get the 
you know, community safe, cleaner, mm -hmm. not being bit. Um, we also, because next week is National Mosquito Control Awareness Week, we will be attending a few different things. So um, I will be at both of the Lowe's, uh, Spring Hill and the Brooksville one. I have our schedule online. And I will be replenishing all of our flyers in the Chamber of Commerce um, building and the courthouse. So if people want to grab some flyers or anything like that, I will be uh, replenishing them next week. So, mm -hmm. And you go to a lot of things. You went to Swamp Fest. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. You were at the Hurricane Expo. Uh, yes. And mm -hmm. we will be at the Hernando County Education Foundation's uh, two summer reading bashes. Cool. Yes. Yeah. I like working with kids. That's that's mm -hmm. that's fun. Um, and Alyssa has a Facebook page. Yes. Under Hernando County Mosquito Control, and we yes. do also. Mm -hmm. So even though we're small departments, we try to have a big presence on social media. Mm -hmm. And I share. I share a lot of Alyssa's things mm -hmm. that she posts. I share them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a story I just thought of before we wrap up and it's regarding mosquito control and being new in Florida. So I was 11 when we moved here 45 years ago. There you go. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> um, and like the first couple weeks of being here and we had this little airy shack, as I call it in Masaryk town and it was getting dark and I heard this, truck this and i asked my sister i'm like what is that and it was just the way that she answered and didn't finish the sentence she goes mosquito and i'm looking like my eyes are getting big and big and big and then she finally says truck <laughs> like that was the biggest mosquito i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> and it's our trucks now have um ulv sprayers on them so they're very they're they're relatively quiet now <laughs> and so a lot of people will um call us and say you know i haven't heard you come by i haven't heard the truck in forever and it's like yeah well we send it out at night and we don't want to be making that much noise so right, right, right. our sprayers are you know ultra low volume sprayers so they're not creating as much noise and hopefully there's no children running behind them. <laughs> so. Yes. Would I, aerial spraying be beneficial at all in this county? I'm sorry? Would aerial spraying be beneficial at all? It could be. Um, uh, we don't have uh, necessarily the funding for aerial uh, spraying. We are working with, we do have a drone um, that we do surveillance with. So we are trying to move forward and um, move our mosquito control to a higher level. We are working to use our drone to get into areas that we might not normally be able to reach by um, vehicle, Argo or um, person. So it could other other counties use aerial spray programs. Um, but as of right now, it's up Are you going to fly the plane, Bernie? Well, not me. I was <laughs> just thinking, though, you know, if we had an old 747, we could cover the whole county in one pass. <laughs> <laughs> and we are going to uh, be acquiring a treatment drone this summer. So cool <laughs> we're moving forward we're moving forward with our technology yeah. we're uh getting with the times yeah i can see where the uh, treatment drone would really work well and mm -hmm. uh, just drop pellets some of these locations yeah. where they're they're low and swampy mm -hmm. and you can't and that's them. that's a lot of yeah. our issue is um it, we can't get to them even with our boats our argo we have a lot of toys but sometimes it's too densely packed we can't get in there safely um so the drones are very the surveillance drone is very helpful and i know that the um treatment drone will be very helpful in those situations yeah i'm i'm in the hilly part of the county in the eastern part of the county mm -hmm. and and in the low areas uh, there's some fairly swampy areas that you can't mm -hmm. get to and accessible. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. sure they're major mosquito breeding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I appreciate it. you. You provide a lot of information, and it's thank you. Nice, <laughs> nice and concise, and it's understandable by people that maybe have an IQ like me, where it's down in the, <laughs> the lower half, and and you appreciate the the. He's the lying. Fact. So. <laughs> well, I, I just want to tell you, I find these things really annoying when when they come in and they talk beyond. Yeah. What but Use all the Latin terms yeah. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so that this is this has been one of the nicest presentations, and thank you very much. Well, yeah, and thank you. Have back again. Yeah. We'll, we'll make her a regular. We need to get more <laughs> more county people on here sharing what kind of county services we provide. Yeah. And even if you're watching from another county outside of Hernando County, you know there's a good chance your county provides things and services that you don't know about either. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Okay, it's 11 o'clock, so, Dr. Nestor. Anybody have any last minute questions? You want to go ahead and squeeze them in really, really quickly here. Okay. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and start pulling things together. <coughs> go ahead and show Alyssa's email one more time. So if you have any other questions about mosquitoes uh, here in Hernando County, go ahead and shoot her an email. That is A L H A S S. H A A S. Yes. It's, I'm sorry. Ah, and it's okay. H A A S <laughs> at co.hernando.fl.us. Yes. That's a really long email. Or you could go to county.us and get her as mm -hmm. well. Either one would See, work. mine's yeah. a lot shorter and easier to remember. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you need us, you can message us on Facebook. Um, you can message us. We have um, a email, M O S Q. C O N one um, mm -hmm. at hernadocounty.us. But yeah, if you message us on Facebook, comment on one of our posts, we can respond to that as well. Um, and keep an eye out on our Facebook and our Twitter uh, for where we'll be in the community, what we're doing, what's going on. And it's you a should, good way to keep on buzzer, of, not Twitter for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good way to keep on top of important information too, because I know that we try to share on our Facebook page about outbreaks of mosquitoes, new diseases, new mosquitoes, mm -hmm. new species mm -hmm. of mosquitoes come to Florida. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they come to South Florida first and they may or may not yeah. ever make it up here. It's just good to be aware of what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. And, and I know a lot of Alyssa's uh, or mosquito controls, technical information and advice they rely on comes from UF, just like, you know, you are an extension of UF. So, mm -hmm. you know, that land grant university of ours also provides a lot of support for the research and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. UF extension. We have our um, mosquito specialist. She works out of Fort Lauderdale. We need to do a class where we have her and Alyssa on here. So mm -hmm. here, I'm going to put that on my ideal list, I think, for <laughs> mosquitoes. But other than that, hey, guys, looks like it's about that time today. So thank you it's so much for joining in. Yes, you made the hour fly by, Alyssa. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. We will be back here next Thursday at 10 a.m. Lily, you're going to be here? Yes. Bernie? I am. I haven't missed one yet. So yeah, I was say, Bernie's always here on Thursdays. Let me check my schedule. Yeah, I'm here. So, hey, we're all here. <laughs> and we'll have Alyssa back on again real soon. So, yeah. everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, until next week, have a wonderful week. Thank you. We will see you.